Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good people. Ah, yeah, you know what it is. Hard worker, scrappy, unfiltered, and sometimes unhinged football content. Hard to explain, but you know it when you see it. Doing it daily our way. I don't know what you're talking about right now. Redraft and Dynasty Fantasy Football, we got you covered. You know their defense is ranked like 31st in the NFL? NFL draft prospects and rookies? Now you know you in the right place for that. Absolutely. All right, then stop saying it. Then we're done. And prop bets with my man Jay Rich. Count that money, man. Now wipe the crust out of your eyes. Get you a cup of coffee. It's time to wake your ass up with Ray G. You honestly are making absolutely no sense and you sound silly as hell. Good morning, 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 good people. It is Wednesday, December the 21st, December the 21st, December 21st, 2022. Y'all decided to wake y'all asses up with Ray G and for that, appreciate y'all being here, man. Shout out Fizzle Dollars on the intro song and I hope you feel better, my man. My man Fizzle came out to Dallas, J. Rich, was partying. Man, I saw the Instagram, I saw the Twitter videos and the pictures. My man was out there partying in Dallas and got his ass sick, man. It is uh, it is apocalyptic type uh, viruses floating around here in North Texas, man. So I hope you feel better fizzling. Everybody out there that's dealing with some flu or RSV or whatever, man, I hope y'all feel better, man. It's crazy out here in these streets. I went to Walmart, Jay, just to get some kids Tylenol, and it was just like, Nothing there, like legit kid Tylenol apocalypse out here in these uh, in these pharmaceutical streets. But shout out to the people that pay the bills. Prize Picks use the promo code Wake Up for an instant deposit match up to one hundred dollars. If you put in a hundred, they give you a hundred. Come play with us. We're doing NBA prop videos every day. Getting ready. MLB. Jay Rich, I know you're ready for MLB. MLB is back on the way soon. WNBA, oh, yeah. NFL, all that good stuff. And shout out to the Michelle Adoro team, MichelleAdoroUSA.com. Use the promo code Wake Up. I highly doubt if you order it now, you'll get it in time for the Christmas holiday. But still, it's some damn good coffee, and I got to have it every morning I wake up, or else I am no good. So use the promo code Wake Up, Michelle Adoro Coffee. It's delicious, it's good. I got the uh, Brooklyn Blend. That's my special. I love it. It's good. It's great. It's better than that Walmart shit. So get you some of that Michelle Adoro coffee. But uh, Jay, today we are going to get into um, an early look of the 2023 class. Right now, we're still waiting on some more players to declare. We've got a list of some cats that have declared. We're going to take our time. We're going to take our time. This is what we do. The rookie process. We love it. This is what we're known for. Um, so we're going to start to talk about it from a philosophical standpoint. I really want to look at this class holistically and some of the things that maybe we noticed this NFL season that we overreact to as far as rookies or we're overthinking or we're underthinking or, or any of those things. So i got a couple of things that I just want to talk to you and the people about. So we're going to have a good conversation today and start this thing off the right way. But uh, I keep talking to you, but let's get you on the screen. Jay, how you doing this morning, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. I know uh, you would know better than most about the Texas streets and uh, the Dallas DFW mm, streets, right? Streets, How bad they baby. are right now. Them yeah, streets. Man, you've been not quite raised in them streets, but definitely uh, some growing <laughs> up in those streets. <laughs> uh, spent some time doing some some silly things, but no, I was not raised by the streets. No, no, I was not. But uh, yeah, man, shout out to Fizzle. Happy to be here. Um, yeah, the scouting process, you know, we had a conversation yesterday about uh, the things that we want to do for this scouting process. So very excited. It was uh, about 1 a.m. last night and I was doing some stuff. Were you doing show, some stuff and just, in the, in the, I was, in the model? You know, I tell people, man, the, the worst part about me, Ray, is I get the best ideas at night. Like the, mm -hmm. the things that come to my mind, I'm like, oh, let me just hop in R for like a couple hours and it's like two o'clock and I'm like, damn, man, we got to show 8 a.m. Like I got to relax. Yeah, yeah. Right. So today I'm going to get into it more. But we, we talked a lot about the scouting process, um, some things that we want to do and uh, bring to the people a, a lot of cool things I think will be on the way. And and it's it's exciting for me because, you know, I haven't, haven't had my scouting cap on for a while, but uh, you're, you're pulling me out of retirement uh, just when I thought I was out. Ray G pulled me back in. So I'm uh, very excited for that. But I'm excited man, back in. Fun. All right. Yes, well, we uh. We got some uh, some um, some interesting, uh, quite impactful news broke right after we finished our show on Monday. So we got a couple of things we need to talk about. So let's roll uh, let's roll your spot and let's get into the news, man. The biggest news in the world of sports, covered and brought to you by one man, Jordan Richards. 
This is Straight Facts, presented by Michelle Adoro. So some of the biggest news that broke over the past couple of days, Jonathan Taylor put on injured reserve. Uh, apparently, Matthew Stafford is not retiring, Ray. I didn't catch that till early this morning. And then on top of that, um, Jalen Hurts, obviously the biggest news of the day. No point of bearing yeah. the lead there. He is questionable to play, might play, might not play. Shoulder injury that was suffered in the third quarter of the Chicago Bears game. Gardner Minshew is preparing to play. Um, big point spread swing out of nowhere, Ray, for your Dallas Cowboys. They are favored by a point and a half. Swung all the way to minus six and a half. Now it's settled right around five and a half. They are not expecting Jalen Hurts to play, but all indications from the pressers and things is he still may play. Yeah, you know, I Vegas ain't stupid, but it's very interesting to see that kind of stuff. I, I, I get from a gamesmanship standpoint, but I mean, no one expects them to play. They're playing for the playoffs. They're playing for the Super Bowl. They could rest them over a month, basically, by the time the second round of the playoffs ultimately come about. Do you really think there's any shot he actually plays in this game, Ray? Outside of that, um, unless you want to talk about Carlos Correa signing with the Mets. Um, Is that a good whatever. signing? See, I saw a lot of people <laughs> upset about that. <laughs> So, okay, quickly, Ray, to give you the little story, he signed with the San Francisco Giants for like right. $350 million, overpaid, whatever. Then he failed his physical with the Giants, and then like, this was sometime yesterday, and then late last night, early this morning, it was announced he was signing with the Mets. And everyone's like, God damn, now the Mets have the largest payroll in history. It was reported, it was before it was around $350 million. Now they are over four, I think they're $487 million just for next season. Highest payroll in MLB history. And uh, not even the best team in their own division. Wow. So yeah, wow. shout out the Mets. Shout out the there Mets. There you go, Mets talk um, on, a, on a Wednesday. <laughs> um, so do I think Jalen Hurts is going to play? Probably not. If If I were the Eagles, even if he's like feeling okay, you just sit him. They're going to be the number one seed in the NFC. So you sit him and you get him ready for the playoffs because that's ultimately what matters. Uh, they've done their job. He's thir they're, what the Eagles are 13 and one on the season, 13 and one. Yeah. Philadelphia. 14 and one, potentially even. Four, yeah. yeah, just chill. I, I, It's unfortunate, man. Like to lose this caliber of player right before the fantasy championship game matchups. He got us is, all the way there, man. Got us all the way there. Sucks. This sucks. This is not good. This is not good. Well, it's not the champion, fantasy championship, but it's right there, you know, right before. Conference champion. Yeah. yeah, conference championships. Um, that's unfortunate, man. Um, you know, there's some people out there that think he's a system quarterback and Gardner Minch, you can come in and just do the same thing he was doing. I don't believe that to be the case. But this sucks. Um, it sucks about Jonathan Taylor, but he's been kind of shitty all season, so it's not like you're you're really losing a ton um, in that yeah. regard. Uh, but no, I don't think he's going to play. I think they're going to sit him. I think they're going to do the right thing, and they're going to get him ready for the playoffs because ultimately that's what matters, Jay. And that's actually a really good segue into sort of what I want to dive into today and the conversation that I want to have with you and the people in the building, man. Shout out to everybody here today, too. I didn't say good morning to y'all. I see Pello in the building, Mike A, Roro, Stanley in the building, Marlon, Isaiah, Patterson, my girl Joe's in the building, Doak Walker, Rico Stone. Good to see y'all here. Lindsey Mack, Fizzle, yes, sir. Um, but uh, here's here's what I'm thinking, Jay. A lot of times, you know, you get people out there ready to run the mocks. And trust me, we are running mocks. Dynasty Barry is oh, running. Yeah. We're running a mock a day, almost. Like, there's... There is no service out there, and I'm, I can say that with 1,000% confidence that's not going to have more at least data points of NFL rookie mocks than we have because we've been, been doing them all season, first of all. So it's interesting to look back at where the players are valued in August and July and sort yeah. of the fluctuation of their values throughout the season. Um, but a lot of times you're like, oh, there's still a lot of time left. We still got, why are we, why are we talking about rookies? Why are we paying attention to rookies right now? We still have so many just different points along the way that in which we have to hit. We still have the bowl games. We've got the college football playoffs. We've got the natty. We've got the senior bowl. We've got the combine. We've got pro days and then ultimately the NFL draft. But Jay, I'm sitting back and, you know, I'm updating my tiers and don't really have rankings yet. That's just not how I do it yet. I mean, I'm, I will put numbers next to players at some point to have a big board. But as far as official rankings, that's not going to come until much later in the process, Jay. But I, I was I was thinking about this last night, man. I called you. You didn't answer. It pissed me off. Uh, but I was thinking about the quarterbacks. And Jalen Hurts is actually a really good segue into sort of the early look at this 23 quarterback class that I want to talk about. And um, quite frankly, as I look at the database, it's not good. Like, it's just yeah. you look at the players – 
I don't know if any of these guys are, we would consider them elite prospects. But the question that I want to ask you and the question I want to ask everybody in the building is, we seem to like think about quarterbacks, I think, Jay, in the light of, you know, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, these quarterbacks that go out there and throw the ball 40 times a game, 50 times a game. They're throwing for three, four, 500 yards in a game. And we have sat back this NFL season and I've been guilty of it. You've been guilty of it. We all have made fun of Justin Fields to a degree, right? We're like, oh, oh yeah. all he does, all he does is he only throws it 25 times a game. He only throws it, he barely can get 30 pass attempts per game. But what I'm interested to see with this draft cycle and Jay, sort of the draft cycles moving forward are, is there a shift in the NFL to where you don't need your quarterback to throw the ball 45 times a game? in which to win, right? Like, I'm looking at what Justin Fields is doing. And, it, you, you know, part of me is if I told you right now, Jay, if I just said you're you're going to get only five to seven more elite years out of Josh Allen, right? That's all you're going to get, right? We like to think that we have these quarterbacks for 15, 20 years. They're going to play as long as Aaron Rodgers, as long as Tom Brady. But if I told you today you're only getting five more years of this version of Josh Allen – would that change where you draft him in a startup? No. It, it wouldn't Absolutely me either, not. right? Not me either, right? So maybe these running quarterbacks, just maybe, and it's just a it's some philosophy that I have. Maybe they're not, maybe they're not going to play 15 plus years. Maybe they're not going to play 17 years like a Drew Brees or Peyton Manning or an Aaron Rodgers. Maybe all they're going to give you is, you know, you know, nine years in the NFL. But I'm watching Justin Fields versus the number one team in the NFL, and that Chicago Bears team is awful, Jay. Their pass yeah. catchers are terrible. Um, you, you're looking at, like, Daniel Jones, right? That team around him isn't very good. But maybe what if there's a shift in the NFL to where you don't need the quarterback to throw the ball 40 times a game in order to be competitive, right? If you've got the threat to move around with your legs, you're hearing Darius Slay, all pro cornerback from the Eagles say, yeah, this dude is legit. Like J yeah. J Justin Hurts is legit. He's big. He's a bit, he's bigger than, and he said this about his own quarterback. He said he's bigger than Hurts. He's a little bit faster than Hurts. Like this dude is the real damn deal. And we sit back and we're looking at prospects like an Anthony Richardson, right? And we're like, oh, he can't, he can't, he, 70, he's not a 70% completion percentage passer. He doesn't throw the ball 40 times. What if he doesn't need to do that? What if all he needs to do is be right around 60% completion percentage, be able to utilize his legs, threaten defenses, and he's going to, like, is is there, an, is there a chance that we are not adjusting for what these athletes are coming into the NFL? Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, and we know Josh Allen has gotten better. I get it, but yep. he wasn't some prolific passer the first two years of his career, right? He was quite bad, and there are some big-name analysts out there, and I'm not going to say the names of who they are on this show, not today, but completely shit on Josh Allen going into year three. I vividly, I've got the receipts. He's no good. He's never going to be good. The completion percentage is low. What if, do we, is, what if the NFL is telling us we don't need that? I don't need you to go out there and dice up NFL defenses like Drew Brees of the past. If you have a skill set that threatens mm -hmm. defenses with your legs, like that's that's what I need. I need you to be able to complete a couple of passes when you need to. And everybody likes to shit on, oh, Hurts' passes to commit, they're all manufactured. I don't give a damn how he gets it done, right? If all he needs to do is throw 25 to 30 times, but he puts that stress on defenses, like are we not – adjusting for what's happening in the college game and what's transitioning to the NFL. Yeah. So I think you made a lot of good points there. Now you made a lot and I'm going to kind of dive into well, it. That's best what I, I do. Can. I make a lot. <laughs> so the big thing here, right. And you, I think you make some great points about attempts per game. That is definitely overblown, especially in the fantasy world, because you see the difference it makes when you have a Russian quarterback in the fantasy world. Now, obviously for the NFL world, that's a little bit different, but I want to give Scott Connor a lot of credit here, Ray, because he brought us a graphic to the Heisman chat talking about neutral pass rate. And you look at the top five and the top and the bottom five teams in this chart, and it's no, no surprise to anybody, but you, again, it goes back to past attempts per game. 
that doesn't really matter. But when you look at neutral pass rate, how often are these teams passing in neutral situations? That's when you start to see the difference here. Number one, the Bengals and Joe Burrow. Number two, the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. Number three, Josh Allen, the Buffalo Bills. Number four, Justin Herbert and the Los Angeles Chargers. Number five, the Seattle Seahawks and Geno Smith. Number six, G, uh, sorry, Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles, the only teams over 60%. Now, the bottom teams, the Atlanta Falcons, they're terrible. The Chicago Bears, they're terrible. The Washington Commanders, they're terrible. The Saints, they're terrible. And the Tennessee Titans, they're terrible. Followed by your Dallas Cowboys, Houston Texans, Carolina Panthers, the uh, San Francisco 49ers, and then the New York Giants, kind of right around 50%. So, you see the trend there. The good teams, they pass in neutral situations. The bad teams, they run on neutral situations. And that's kind of, I think, more indicative of where the NFL is trending. You need your quarterback to throw on early downs. And part of that is scheme. Part of that is philosophy. And again, like you mentioned, if you can run, it's an asset. I don't know if it's something that you need. And I think your point about the longevity of these quarterbacks being not a Drew Brees. And, and it's an interesting but conversation. Do you even, because- my thing is, I don't even care. I don't need We to, don't care. For I'm fantasy not, land, we shouldn't care, fantasy, right? It's not a window. Have, if you have a player on your roster for 15 years, you did it wrong. Like, you're not, like, no yeah. one has, first of all, the league ain't going to last that long. You're not going to have some player for 15 years. So I don't care about that. That's why I said, if I told you today that Josh Allen only has five more years in the league of being Josh Allen, would that influence or change your decision to draft him at the top of a startup? And the answer is no, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't change not. my decision at all. I still want him. If you're telling me I'm getting five more years of this, I don't care if he doesn't play until he's 45 years old. That doesn't matter to me. Like, I don't care. Yeah, so I think the conversation then comes to, and I'm assuming this is where you're getting with this, is all these prospects in 2023, right? You've mentioned this multiple times. They all kind of have a hole. They all kind of have a, a chink in their armor. And so we have to decide as fantasy managers, what is the worst one? And what right. is the one that's most acceptable, right? right. And, I, and I don't know if you were getting at this, and I'll throw this to you quickly or long, whatever you want to go with it. We're going to take our time with this. What, we're going to take our time, man. You, what is your number one trait in a you know fantasy quarterback that you would be willing to let go? Because there are the concerns about C.J. Stroud not being able to run. Now, we have seen it, and there are talks about Ryan Day not letting his quarterbacks run or not wanting his quarterbacks to run, right? So C.J. Stroud doesn't run as much as he probably could. Bryce Young obviously can move a little bit. Will Levis can move we've seen it at times and then obviously anthony richardson is kind of the crown jewel in terms of running quarterbacks but he has deficiencies elsewhere so where would you want to take that conversation in terms of deficiencies of these quarterbacks relative to obviously the studs i think the longevity point is interesting only because we're seeing a massive transition all these quarterbacks have been around for a long time are retiring we're getting a new wave of quarterbacks that will be you know in theory the new franchise quarterbacks justin herbert joe burrows the patrick mahomes all these guys potentially the jalen hurts but in terms of these, this 23 class, what are you seeing amongst these players in terms of their traits and kind of how would you evaluate them? Or where do you want to take this conversation about these guys? I mean, I just, I mean, we, we started to dive into this conversation, Jay, and we'll pull up our, uh, our, uh, our database real quick and just kind of look at the quarterbacks. We started to have this conversation a couple of weeks ago where I said that if given the draft capital, right, if Anthony Richardson is drafted as a first round pick, which I fully believe he will. Like uh, there are people out there that may disagree. I wholeheartedly believe when it's all said and done, he's going to be a first round pick. If he's not a first round pick in the NFL draft, or at least a top 50 pick that Jalen hurts type draft capital, then this changes the whole equation, right? If he's not that, then, then I'm out, right? If he's, if he's a third round pick, a la Malik Willis, uh, Matt Corral, a Desmond Ritter, I'm out. But I believe today where we sit on December 21st that Anthony Richardson will be a, a first-round pick at quarterback. And I'm, I'm watching him, Jay, and I, I've, I've, I've got clips cut up. I was going to drop them on Twitter to, to prep for the show, but I'm just like, I'm going to hold off a little bit. He's probably going to be my QB1. Like, I'm just, okay. I'm just telling you that right now. For what we do, which is fantasy football, right? We're here talking about fantasy football. I don't know if he's going to be the next Aaron Rodgers and play for 25 fucking years, and I don't really care, right? I'm looking at the way that the NFL is changing, and I'm seeing these running quarterbacks, these mobile quarterbacks, be able to put up points no matter what. Like, they're just, if you can, Hurts can be having the worst passing day of them all, eight. Eight for eight for 12, 62 yards, and all of a sudden you look up, bang, 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 he's ripped off 45 yards and a touchdown, and now he's a QB1. And I believe Anthony Richardson has that skill set. So when you look, first of all, when you look at this quarterback class in totality, it's not good, right? Like, And we don't even know if, 
I, I, I truly don't even know if Malik Cunningham is declared yet or not, but even if he does, he's I don't want him. I don't know if Dylan Gabriel is coming back or not. Even if he is, I don't I don't want him. All right, there's Jake Hayner. I'll get a chance. We'll get a chance to see him at the Senior Bowl. But it's really, man, like realistically, it's a four-man race, Jay. It's it's Bryce Young. It's Anthony Richardson. It's C.J. Stroud. It's Will Levis. I have little to no interest in Tanner McKee, little to no interest in Hendon Hooker. Cam Rising, I mean, maybe, you know, I, I, not much so, realistically. Quick so, question for you to cut you off. Well, don't if, cut me If off. you want to talk about Hook, okay. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just messing. I was going to ask you about Hooker because I don't know if we're going to talk about Hooker, but but what is the threshold of draft capital that you would well, consider? We'll, we'll you said you're, you're out on you're him. Jumping, you're jumping the horse. You're jumping the horse. So let's, let's start with th- your initial question, the warts of the top quarterback. So, I mean, it's pretty obvious. Bryce Young, um, I, I think he's the most pro-ready of the 23 quarterbacks. I really do. I think he's the one that's probably going to be the number one overall pick. I believe he will go to Houston. There are a lot of ties between... Uh, the Houston Texans ownership family, Alabama. There's just a lot of connections there. I think Bryce Young's, when it's all said and done, is going to be the number one pick. But there's no doubt about it, man. We've seen the pictures of him standing next to Nick Saban, standing next to Kyler Murray. He's a little dude. I work at TDN, and they flat out told me, you will walk past Bryce Young and not even, you wouldn't think twice that this dude is an NFL, uh, uh, you know, an NFL type quarterback. Like, you would not. You wouldn't even, you wouldn't look twice and be like, dang, that's that's a dude right there. He just looks like a regular guy, right? 190 pounds. I don't none of them believe he's six feet tall. So you're talking about a five foot eleven, hundred and ninety-five pound quarterback. He's great. I'm gonna run for a playing quarterback. He's great, but let's like that that's the wart. That's the concern, right? That's the that's the fear of a Bryce Young. And if he's drafted by Houston. Uh, you know, the offensive line's not super good. There's not a lot of weapons there. They'll probably pair him with a rookie quarterback with, with with their second first round pick. But that's the wart with Bryce Young. When you look at Anthony Richardson, um, athletically, physically, probably the most gifted quarterback we've seen coming in the NFL since Cam Newton or Lamar Jackson, at least. When you're just talking about size, speed, uh, the arm strength is not an issue. Some people will have that about Bryce Young. There will be people that say, can't does he have the arm strength to complete those passes, right? Anthony Richardson, there's no questions about that. The issue with him is he just has uh truly just doesn't have experience, right? He's a young quarterback, Jay. You talked a little bit about CJ Stroud. I think he is you give him time, he's surgical. Uh, and I, I know a lot of the early comps for CJ Stroud have been Jared Goff. And I know a lot of people hear that and they yeah, oh, that's disgusting. I mean Jared Goff, you give him time, he'll slice you up for 4,500 yards in a season. He's done that multiple times, right? You you put him in structure. You surround him with talent. That's what C.J. Stroud had at Ohio State. He can run the ball. That's not his That's not his strong suit. That's not his forte. That's not his calling card. But he can do it, right? He can deliver the ball from all platforms into tight spaces. He's got a really live arm. I think he's a good quarterback prospect, not elite. And then you look at Will Levis, right? Will Levis is another one of those guys in that Anthony Richardson mold, Jay, that we're talking about a player that has the tools and the traits, a player that right now NFL evaluators are still extremely high on Will Levis despite the sour taste that the fantasy community may have in our mouths because of the lack of production this year, the lack of growth or maturation from Will Levis this year, but he's still going to be a top pick. Like, get over it. Cry, cry. Go cuss, go punch a wall, go punch air. He's going to be a first-round pick. He's probably going to be a top-10 pick in the NFL draft. He's going to look awesome in the pre-draft process when they do the pro day at Kentucky, and he's out there chiseled and big and launching the ball yeah. and doing the Zach Wilson throw. People are going to get uh, they're going to they're going to get a hard on for Will Levis. So when you look at those four quarterbacks, Jay, they all have warts, right? And when you look at their advanced analytics, shout out to JB and what he does in our database. You look at the top 12 uh, quarterbacks uh, based on the end of season in QBR. You got Hendon Hooker up there, CJ Stroud. We know Bo Nix is not declaring for the NFL draft. Bryce Young right here at 83.9 QBR. There goes Cam Rising, DTR. Michael Penix is coming back. And then the final guy that's actually declared for the draft, Max Duggan, at 79.7. So you're looking at just what they've done from an efficiency standpoint in college throughout the season. And CJ Stroud leads the way. There is no Anthony Richardson there. There is no Will Levis at the top yeah. of this class. So um, you, you asked the question about Hendon Hooker, Jay. I, I, I think 
When it's all said and done, we'll have four first-round quarterbacks, and they're the four guys that are in Tier 1 right now currently in my rankings. Will Levis, C.J. Stroud, A. Rich, and Bryce Young. Yeah, so I, I so it wasn't so much about whether he's the first rounder. I think you know we projected him there, but then he tore his ACL, and so it's kind of like I'm with you 100 percent though. Everything you're saying about these top quarterbacks is is 100 percent right. I, I'm curious, I'm curious what happens with Bryce. I think more than anybody else, right? Because you mentioned most pro ready. Who was the most pro ready quarterback in 2020? It was Mac Jones, right? In the, in some in some respects, he was the guy who was you know T Law was obviously up there, but it's just you look at these quarterbacks and you're like. Mac Jones is the most pro ready, and now we're kind of like, does do we even want him in fantasy? What what does his ceiling look like, and all these things? And so it's just how do we evaluate these players? And and I definitely get you in saying that Anthony Richardson should be QB one because to your point is you just look. I'm at not the top saying of the he board. should be. I'm not saying he. Okay. Sh- I don't. I just you'd be your QB one for me personally yeah. for fantasy football for the thing that we're looking for, right? And Jay, I, you know, I said this about Jalen Hurts two and a half years ago, Jay. Uh, and was was massacred for saying that I believe that he can develop and be a better passer of the football than Lamar Jackson. I said he's not better than Lamar Jackson, but I believe that he has what it takes in order to get there. And, you know, people hung me from the cross and, and lit that bitch on fire um, and with me on the stake. And, you know, I, you know, I carried that thing for the community, baby. I carried that burning. Let me stop. Let me stop playing right now. Let me stop. Let me, let me. Not. But the point is, I believe Anthony Richardson for fantasy football, what we're looking for, if given the capital, that's what the, that's the guy that I want, man. I truly believe that he has the skill set to where I don't need him to be Aaron Rodgers, Jay. I don't want him to be yeah. that. He shouldn't be that. I don't want Justin Fields to become Drew Brees. I want Fields to do what Fields does best, which is run gimmicky kind of schemed open wide receiver plays and utilize his legs. That's what I want Fields to do. I don't want him to be Aaron Rodgers. I want him to continue to do the things that makes him successful, which is utilize his legs as a weapon. And I think Richardson could do the same type of thing. Yeah, no, I'm with you 100%. I think I'm looking now at kind of the draft and what kind of team fits there are. The thing that I think that makes me so upset is that you look at Detroit and it looks like the perfect spot for any rookie quarterback, whether it's Bryce Young. So like if if they can just develop a quarterback in that system, it would be great because they they have the offensive line. But you talk about Bryce Young in Houston and I don't. I don't love it. I don't I don't know where that pegs him amongst all the quarterbacks. Can he even break the top 12 <laughs> in this? Leo's saying Ray Jesus Q. Look at that, Ray. I, mean, I just, you. I bear the, I will carry it, man. I'll carry it for us, Jay. I will do it. I'll put it on my so back. So you got, you got Houston at one, um, Seattle at three. Maybe they take a quarterback. Arizona probably not taking a quarterback. I mean, they're not. Indy though at six now. At six. Atlanta at seven. Carolina at eight. Las Vegas probably not at 10. So you look at those situations, you clearly see Houston, Indy, Atlanta, potentially Seattle and Carolina as potential fits. Which one is kind of the best for you outside of obviously Detroit, who we kind of already mentioned would be great just from a growth standpoint, offensive line, talent around them. Any of them. We know That's the honeypot. That's the honeypot landing spot. If Detroit takes a quarterback, I don't care which one it is. If it's Stroud, great fit. I would love Stroud in Detroit. If it's Levis, I think he's got the infrastructure around him to be successful, right? If it's Richardson, you don't have to worry. And then you don't have to worry about these guys playing early. And I just, I yeah. I, I really want to, Chris, man, appreciate you saying, Chris said, Ray really has me believing in Richardson. Going to have to roll that down. Here's my thing. It's, I, I don't, I'm not here to change anybody's mind or convince anybody. But all I'm saying is, as the NFL game changes, right? And we're seeing these more dynamic collegiate players Coming to the NFL, whether that's uh, you know, ten years ago, you wanted the six foot four, two hundred and twenty pound wide receiver, the Mike Williams yeah. of the world, right? But we're seeing that players can thrive at one hundred eighty five pounds. The Slim Reaper can thrive at one hundred sixty pounds. Marquise Brown, like we're seeing the game change, right, Jay? I remember a world in which linebackers were one hundred two hundred sixty <laughs> pounds in the middle, just. You Good know, move. big cloggers, right? You don't even see, you see Deion Joneses and you're seeing like the game is changing, right? So all I'm saying is let's not be ignorant to the fact, or at least let's not have our blinders on to the fact that A. Rich may never need to be some 70% completion per- percentage passer in order to be effective in the NFL and for him to score fantasy points for up. He may never have to do that, Jay. 
he he may be a cat that fields i don't think he'll ever get to that point and it may not matter all i'm saying is as we enter this process let's keep an open mind to the fact that no nah, these cats ain't gonna come in like that what do you think trey you think trey lance was about to come in and yeah. just be a 75 percent completion percentage thrower from day one it wasn't gonna happen you know they were gonna utilize his strengths and you watch players like richardson right you watch players like and you can see it it doesn't it doesn't take a goddamn rocket science to say like man like if this dude gets some time and he can groom this dude could be pretty freaking good in the nfl and we we do it every week with jay with justin fields oh man he's not th he's only throwing the ball 23 times and you look up he's got 40 goddamn fantasy points and you're like oh well <laughs> doesn't really matter right he threw it enough he threw it enough and he was efficient with the few throws that he had. So it's it's not me trying to get you to believe in it, right? Daniel Jones, to a degree. You may not like him, you may hate him, but he's been very usable in fantasy football this year. And he ain't out there slinging the ball around 80 times a game and throwing for 400 yards. He's not doing it because I don't believe you have to do that in today's NFL, Jay. Yeah, no, I think you're 100% right. You know, Daniel Jones is a great example. He's only thrown the ball 400 times this season, but completed 66% of his passes. So he's he's getting up there, right? But again, that's on the coaching staff. That's on the offensive philosophy to make this quarterback's job easier too. And I think that's where these situations really come into play. You look at a spot like Atlanta, I think is intriguing because they will still focus on the running game. They won't put as much emphasis on the pass. They'll probably come in and start right away, but you still have the complement of weapons to have confidence in the quarterback's ability to succeed. But your point about these guys sitting is so important because you look at some of the best quarterbacks in the NFL and, and it, they don't always start right out the gate. Cause sometimes when you start right out the gate, you're just not ready. You're just not ready. You know, some of these guys don't come from SEC pedigrees. And even Bryce Young, to some degree, may struggle at times. If he, Even if he is the most pro-ready guy, when you see him in the pocket manipulating, moving around, he's like a, a Jesus out there, the way he just moves in the pocket. But it, it's you look at Levis and Richardson and even Stroud to some degree, I think where Stroud will struggle, and, and I, you kind of said this without saying it, is his stats against the Blitz are god-awful. When he's pressured, he's, he's not good. And so if he's not in that situation like Detroit where he has a great offensive line, he will probably struggle early on, right? And can he use that mobility that he has, or we hope he has, because we haven't seen it a ton, to thrive in the NFL? And so it's it's interesting conversation because I am with you with Richardson. He's the guy that if everything hits, he's probably the top quarterback in the class. I think you make the same case for Will Levis, but I don't know if you can Would make you that make case, that for, case for Will? Like, I want to know if people out here, I, I want to know how y'all are feeling, chat. How are y'all feeling about Levis right now? Just... Because I think it's if the, the same argument that we're making for Richardson to be that guy a couple of years down the line, the, if yeah. we're making that for Richardson, then that has to still be the case for Will Levis as well. I think he's do you still... Think that, do you think that's what he could become, though? Because I almost, again, I haven't really watched enough to make that comp, but he feels like a guy who could play at more of a Dak Prescott in his early years, maybe not quite a Joe Burrow in his early years with a bit more, like, you know, when Dak Prescott was running for about 300 yards and five touchdowns a season, it wasn't like it was crazy, but he could move. And he was obviously very accurate delivering the ball, all those things. Um, I look at him like in that, in that breath. I don't know if he's going to hit You're that, talking about that higher threshold. You're talking about Levis? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if he's going to hit that higher threshold in terms of fantasy production from a rushing perspective, or can he be more like a Justin Herbert where he can run, but he doesn't run a ton, but he's still mobile, right? Like, I think... I don't, I, I'm curious if Levis is going to be this prolific runner to where we're like, yeah, like he really adds a lot on the ground or is it more he can run and he may get us 300 yards on the ground a season with four, maybe five touchdowns. I'm just curious what your thoughts are on Levis from a range of outcomes perspective, because I don't necessarily see 500 yards rushing a season, but maybe he can do that for us in uh, in fantasy world. I mean, it's... Uh... I think he I think he can do it, Jay. I, I think he can be I, I don't think he's like Justin Fields, Jalen Hurts, but I think he can do what Daniel Jones does as a okay. as a running quarterback. And right now in the season, Daniel Jones has five hundred and eighty-three rushing yards, I believe. Daniel Jones has. So I, I listen, as as we look at this and the reason why this is important, right? There are a lot of teams in Dynasty right now that have how do you feel right now if Kenny Pickett is your quarterback too? Not good. How do you feel right now if um let's well let's just look. Mac let's, Jones. Let, look, not Mac good. Jones, right? Let's 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 look at the dynasty quarterback landscape, right? 
How do you feel with like Derek Carr, Geno Smith, Jimmy Garoppolo? Uh, Not good. Like I'm looking at some of these tiers, right? Kirk Cousins, Daniel Kirk Jones. Kirk is kind of the only one you're like, okay. And even with I Kirk, he's with 34. Kirk he's 34 years yeah. old. So you're you're getting to the point now where it's like, uh, what's going on, right? Geno Smith, Derek Carr, Jimmy Garoppolo. Trey Lance, how do you feel if Stafford was your QB1? Russell Wilson, Not good. your QB1. Mac Jones, your QB2. So this is important because people are going to have to make these, these rookie quarterback decisions here in the next couple of months, Jay. And what do you want? You want to play it safe with a younger Stroud, or do you want to swing for the goddamn fences and say, I'm taking Will Levis, I'm taking Anthony Richardson? How are you feeling about those guys in Dynasty if, if those are your starting quarterbacks right now? Yeah, I mean, you make a great case. Like, I would feel fine with Stroud as like my QB two, but I I need a QB one if I want to win, right? We talk about trying to when you get a QB one or you can acquire a QB one, you have to make that attempt. You have to throw everything you can because these players are so valuable. There's only so many QB ones, and there's only so many that are even considered like golden goose type top eight startup picks that you want and you need if you want to win. And it's so difficult to win without those guys. And so you talk about a CJ Stroud and a Bryce Young. And while we love them as prospects, they were great collegiate players. We don't necessarily project the ceiling for them to break into the even close to a conversation of even a Kyler Murray, who I have to, at times struggles to put him in my top, you know, nine or 10 at quarterback. So you look at Anthony Rich and you're like, the arm is there. The rushing ability is there. Right. If everything goes right. If everything goes right for Will Levis, because he still has a cannon, he still has a quick yeah, release, he, he makes he good does. decisions, right? Like, he can run. And then you look at Stroud, and you're like, man, he'd have to be like Pat Mahomes or Joe Burrow just to be a top quarterback. Bryce Young, he'd have to be running more, which maybe he'll do a little bit in the NFL. Or again, yeah, I don't think you want him doing that. I don't think you want Bryce doing that. I don't think you want Bryce doing that. I don't think you want him doing that. I don't think you want him doing that. I think... To get there is so... It feels like so much these quarterbacks have to overcome and be hyper efficient and throw for to a ton what? of yards and they're going to bet to be QB eight, QB yeah, nine. Well, in let's Dynasty. talk. Okay. Let's talk. Which, I mean, you look at the top quarterbacks right now in dynasty, the ones that aren't moving, let's just get them out of the way. Josh Allen, not going anywhere. Mahomes, Hertz, Lamar, Herbert, Burrow, Watson. I mean, that's what four, the cutoff five, is. The cutoff is right six, above Watson. Seven. Right? I, T Law eight, Fields nine. Yeah. You still got Dak, Tua, Kyler. Like it's gonna be a tough. It's gonna be a tough pill to get in to crack that mold, Jay. It's gonna be tough to get inside of that for these quarterbacks. Real quick, the, the rest of the class, Jay. I mean, <sighs> Jaden Daniels. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, no, thank you. Jaron Hall. Maybe. We'll see. I think I think it's funny you talked about Cam Rising. I do think maybe you could talk me into some Cam Rising late in a draft. Maybe. He's he's got a bit of the dual threat ability in him. But yeah. again, probably a late round selection, right? It's we'll see. But everyone else, I mean, it's funny because you have a tier two that we haven't talked about it, but people who are listening, you have a tier two with one man and one man only. Max Duggan. Max Duggan. The Max How Duggan the roller Max coaster Duggan? experience. Um he declared for the draft. He's got a big stage this um, this college football postseason. He's going to play yes, Michigan right. in a couple of weeks. What do I think Max Duggan is at the NFL level? Not a starting quarterback. I don't believe that to be the case. Um, <sighs> Dual threat? What, how do you feel about his arm? Do you have any thoughts on his arm? Yeah, I, mean, I don't really know. He he's got grow, a pretty man. solid arm. He's, he's fine. He's, he's fine. I just don't think he's... I don't think you want him lining up and being the guy under center. And I could be wrong there, but quarterback class is is, is very not good. I'll just say there's that. no guy, right? There's no like, guy. There's a lot of good I, I players, think, but there's no guys that we really, really are clamoring for. I, I think what's dynasty. gonna happen throughout this process and, and my, my recommendation is don't spend a ton of time on this, people, because I don't think there's gonna be any consensus. You're gonna have a large contingency that says it's Bryce. You're going to have a large yeah. – shout out to my man Cody Carpentier, player profiler. Cody's like Will Levis, QB1, right? Yep. And I can't – I'm not going to knock him for it. I'm not going to knock him. If that's I, – I can I can paint the picture for Will Levis to be QB1. Some people will have C.J. Stroud as one. And some people, i.e. me, probably will have Anthony Richardson 
as one. If you get drafted in the first round, you're going to matter. If you're not drafted in the first round, it probably really decreases those odds. So uh, we'll get more into the quarterbacks, but let's have some fun and, and take an early look at the running backs, right? And I guess we'll probably wrap it up here. I think, Jay, we're not going to overthink this one at all. Um, the top of the running back class is one man and one man only. It's it's Bijan Robinson who did declare yep. – for the Thank NFL goodness. draft, uh, Bijan is going to be uh, the running back one off of the board. I believe in most cases he'll probably be the rookie one one in all formats. Although, I was listening to my friend Matt Kelly and Rich Rebar on their stream last week as I was uh, on my deathbed with the flu. And uh, Rich asked Matt if Anthony Richardson or Will Levis hit a landing spot like Detroit, is there a chance for them in Superflex to be the one one and Matt unequivocally, the podfather himself, said, oh, yeah, absolutely. If if one of those really? guys land in Detroit, they probably should be the one-on-one in Superflex. And I can't I can't argue against that as well, right? If, if a quarterback, I think that is the honeypot landing spot for quarterbacks this year. They've got the offensive line. They have the weaponry outside. They have a running game. They have a coach. Uh, I think that's the, a great landing spot. I think there's going to be a lot of... A lot of um, Eyes on Jameer Gibbs at the Combine. We have him listed at 5'9", 191 pounds. We'll see, Jay. Like, you know, we we shall see uh, when it comes to Jameer Gibbs. And then uh, my tier two is massive, Jay, because I have no damn clue. We've got Zach Evans, Zach Charbonnet, Devon A-Chain, Blake Corm, Kendra Miller, Chase Brown, Sean Tucker. It's a massive list of tier two players and much like we talked about with the quarterbacks, where, uh, you know, there were warts all over the place, I think the same thing can be said about the running backs, right? We're going through and looking at some PFF grades. By far, the lowest graded rusher, according to PFF in 2022, was Zach Evans. I think he's a 79.7 PFF rushing grade, much lower than Charbonnet, A-Chain, Corum, all these guys, you know? How the how's the NFL going to feel about a have what I've been saying about Tucker the whole time, right? What's yeah. the NFL going to think about a Syracuse running back who's, you know, sub two hundred and ten pounds? We got him at five ten two ten. I think they have him listed at two oh five. We'll see. But what are your early thoughts about this running back class and how to how to start looking at this and 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 thinking about it? You know, from a, from a dynasty perspective. I think it's just, it depends on what happens with the draft, right? You talk about not getting into the weeds too deep on on where these guys are slotted. I think the same case can be made for these running backs. There's just so many guys that you have a mega producer like a Blake Corum who said he might not even declare for the draft. Zach Charbonnet has been producing Wait, at Blake a very Corum high level. That? Yeah, he said he's 50-50 on whether or not he will declare. Uh, Zach Evans looks phenomenal, but gets overtaken by a re- by a freshman running a back. Freshman. Right? Again, J- Judkins is dope, but... Again, it's how do how do we feel about that from an analytics perspective? Do we care? The tape still looks good, still produced in the SEC. Like all those things matter, right? And so I think my my biggest concern isn't so much the players. It's like you clearly see in your tiers. How do we distinguish between these players? Because there's just so many things. Some are, are aren't big enough. Some are mega producers. Some are huge. Some we don't know how the NFL is going to evaluate them. And and I think there's just so much unknown. But with such an old crop of running backs right now, I think that we're just in tune for a lot of good on the way. We don't know who the best guy is going to be, but I think no matter what, if you get your hands on one of those tier two running backs, you're probably going to be happy when it's all said and done. And I think we're going to learn a lot this offseason as we kind of dive into it more about these running backs and what we've seen in the past and how we're going to reevaluate and obviously bring that all to the show. But you just look at some of these guys and you're like, they bruise such a high level. Deuce Vaughn. Third on this list. What's that? Is that yards per team attempt? Yeah, Is yards, that sort per of team atten- yards per team play. Yeah. Monster. Doesn't yeah. even crack the top 10 running backs. No. And it's so it's it's navigating all these things, refining our process. But your point about Gibbs is is interesting because he probably should be RB2, but I wouldn't be shocked if some people slot him down because he's too small or he's just a scat back receiving back. And he could definitely be more than that. But I think there's just going to be a lot still to figure out with these running backs. Mo Ibrahim, he's too old. But man, does he produce at an extremely right. high level, right. right? It's Bijan and everybody else, and I think there's still a lot to figure out with these running backs. But it, do you have any thoughts on this class, and how are you approaching it coming it's into great. the offseason? Uh, um, so we went back through yesterday, Jay, and I was just looking at uh, players who are still kind of in the NFL from various draft classes. 
in the last NFL draft class crop of running backs that are still thriving in the NFL is 2017. 2017, 2017 yeah. right? You go back, I believe 2016, there are a couple of backs. I think it's like uh, Melvin Gordon and somebody else from that class. 2015, I believe it's like uh, Jarek McKinnon. Like the oldest running back from the furthest back draft class that's still in the NFL and he's not thriving is Mark Ingram. And I believe that's the 2011 yeah. class. You've got like Latavius Murray, I believe, from the 2012 class. But the 2017 crop of running backs with Alvin Kamara, Christian McCaffrey, Joe Mixon, that's the last group that's actually in the NFL doing anything right now. Yeah. So you're gonna get a you're going to get an influx of a lot of guys, Jay, that I believe can come in right away from day one and be a factor in an offense. That doesn't mean that they're going to be the guy. And Scott connor has been talking about it a ton. So many times in the dynasty space, we talk about, uh, can this guy come in and take over a backfield? Like that yep. idea of taking over a backfield is probably a tad bit antiquated. I don't know how many teams where there's just a back that takes over a backfield. So what you're looking for are which one of these guys can come in and at least contribute, right? Get playing time early. For in Dynasty at the running back position, we don't have time to fuck around with a running back developing, right? Are you good or are you not? If you can't get on the field early in your career as a running back, the chances of you ever being successful are diminished significantly, Jay, right? That and that we could look oh, yeah. at this 2022 class. Tyrion Davis Price, uh Isaiah Spiller, uh, you know, look. Whatever running back can't get on the field right now, or they get on the field and they pull them right off of the field, it's probably not good. Like, we don't have years to wait for development. It's not quarterback. Wide receiver, you can give them a little grace, right? Year one, they don't produce. We'll wait to see what happens in year two. Running back, you can't play that game. So when I'm yep. looking at these cats, man, I'm looking at Zach Charbonnet at 6'1", 220, top, top five in PFF's receiving grade and top 10 in PFF's rushing grade, he's going to be a cat that probably comes in the NFL, Jay. And it wouldn't shock me if from day one, he's splitting carries in an offense with a running back, oh, yeah. right? They're getting Charbonnet on the field. Uh, you know, Bijan Robinson, we know he's that dude. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on him. Sean Tucker, it's going to be interesting to see what the NFL feels about him. I don't know if Kendra Miller is going to declare right now because we haven't heard of that. But overall... My big takeaway from this running back class, Jay, is it's good. It's deep. Yeah. How many of these guys right now are going to be replaced? And I'm not talking about current NFL starting running backs, but how many of these guys, these Jamal Williams types, right? These sort of guys that are getting some opportunity now, how many of these guys are just going to get kicked out of their spot by some of these incoming rookies, dude? Yeah, Stanley, I'm with you. The guy from UCLA, Zach Charbonnet, yeah. I like him a lot too. Stanley, I like him a lot, too. He's a good player. He's got the prototypical size. The speed score is going to be there. The receiving production profile is there. Charbonnet's a dog. Charbonnet's a dog, and he's still relatively young. So, Jay, I think my big takeaway is this, this running back class is good, and you go down the line. We're not even, we haven't even talked about Tajay Spears, Evan Hull, Kenny McIntosh, Eric Gray, Israel Abaconda. Like, you know, we, we haven't even discussed any of those guys. It's a deep... It's a deep crew at the running back position in 2023. Yeah, no, and you make a point about these rookies, right? And I'm just looking at some snap count information right now. Highest snap count of any rookie as far as running backs go is Damian Pierce, 64%. That's not, like, people expect these running backs to be up in, like, the 80s. The only right. player who's even close to the 80% is Saquon Barkley, and we know he never comes off the field. So, right. I mean, that's just not going to happen. Damian Pierce, 64%. Next highest is Kenneth Walker at 57%. Now he, ha he has missed a few games briefly. <laughs> 49 percent when he was active like it's again the but you to your point about guys producing tyler algier 48 percent brian robinson 42 percent it doesn't sound like a lot but these are guys that are producing for us in fantasy and then you go down to zamir white five percent right yeah, yeah 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 i mean yeah, yeah. so th it's easy to look at these guys and say you know we want them to be 50 percent, 60 percent. that would be great but you can get it done sometimes at 45%, at 50%. Zeke Elliott gets it done, only plays 54% of snaps, right? There's a lot of guys who only play 50% of snaps, but sometimes that's enough. And I think that's that's the big takeaway here is that this idea of a bell cow running back, like it's it's done, man. Like it, if you get 60% of snaps, you are in elite snap share territory because only a select few of those guys even hit 60%. There's like 15 in the league who hit that.
And that's let's play this. Let's play this game, Jay. Let's look at this. Who's getting? Let's play this game with these and think about these twenty-three running backs, right? Who's getting replaced next year? Like you're, you're looking at the NFL right now. Eckler will be twenty-eight. Um, <sighs> you know who could get replaced is Singletary. Singletary's played sixty-seven percent of snaps this season, which is a lot. He's yeah. like in the top ten in the NFL. He's sandwiched between James Conner and Ramondre Stevenson, who also played sixty-seven percent of snaps. Well, I don't want to play this game right now because there's this is this is a how deeper. About, how about James Conner? It's a deep seventy percent of snaps. Yeah, well, yes, James Conner definitely. Um, somebody asked about right. Devon A. Chain. I love him. Um, I want to have him as a top five guy. I really just need to see what the NFL is going to think about him because he is not big. I mean, he's five foot nine, one hundred and eighty-five pounds, but he's the fast. He's probably the fastest running back in this class. Uh, Jay, when you're talking about A. Chain out of Texas A&M, oh, yeah. but you know, where's he going to get drafted, man? You're, you're seeing big name analysts say he's, he's easily a top five guy in this class. It's just, I, I don't, I don't know how the NFL is going to value somebody of his size. I know it's easy to just say, oh, he's the second coming of Jamal Charles, but I think that's kind of an unfair, lofty comparison to put on, you know, A. Chain this early in his career, Jay, but the big takeaway is this running back class is loaded. I know a lot of people keep saying it, but this running back class is absolutely loaded. When you've got Chase Brown and Tucker and Kendra and Corum and A-Chain and Sharbs and Evans, Bigsby, Rodriguez, Dwayne McBride, Evan Hull, Tajay Spears, Deuce Vaughn, who's going to get drafted and have a role somewhere in the NFL. This class is loaded, man. No, Stone. I don't think Dallas – I would love for Tony Pollard to stay in Dallas, but I think he's going to go bag chase as he should. As he should. Yeah, should go get sure. paid. Um, this is a deep class, Jay. What, what are your what are your overall initial thoughts on on this running back crew? Is you know Gibbs is he locked in for your RB two or what? Or do you want to? I wouldn't say he's I wouldn't say he's locked in at all. Um, I'd say he's definitely got the talent to be there, and I think more deserving in, than in terms of his talent than maybe some of the other guys. So I completely agree with where you have him. But it's it's gonna there's still a lot of work to be done for me to distinguish this. And I think, you know, I look at last year's class and they are much more successful than I think I projected early on. But this class, it's like the expectations are there. And so now it's really you got to pick and choose the right guy because there will be guys who flame out and guys who have a ton of success. And that that will be where the homework comes in. And so it's it's a lot to figure out. But I'm really excited for this class. I think we've needed it. You look at the running back landscape and it is bleak. Like you do not want to be drafting or trading for Aaron Jones or James Conner right. or Zeke Elliott or Alvin Kamara or Dalvin Cook. Like, but these guys are top running backs in the NFL. It's like we've been starving for this this year. And hopefully in 24, we get a ton of backs. But we talked about this kind of the renaissance of the quarterback position and all these new guys coming in to fill a whole bunch of old like slots that old guys have held for years. I think hopefully this could be the start of that at the running back position. And with the way they're valued now, some of these guys, it's just, it's not worth it to have them get a new guy, plug them into your system. And I think you will be successful. So I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity for these guys. And I'm hoping that with the talent that they have, they can really produce at the NFL up. And we're going to, we're going to every draft season, we do prospect profiles of all these guys. So yep. we'll break them down and give our individual grade and tell you their strengths and weaknesses and talk through it. And, We've got a bunch of ADP data, rookie mocks, but I really, I really just want to do as we go into bowl season, pay attention to some of these cats, right? Like yep. some of the names that you may not be super familiar with, you may have heard, but how many people have really watched Zach Charbonnet? And if he, I don't know if he's going to play yeah. at the bowl game, but sp spend some time watching him. You know, Dwayne McBride played the other day. Uh, spend some time watching some of these cats. Tajay Spears, if you haven't had a chance to watch him, pay attention. We didn't get into the wide receiver class. We'll do that on a, on another show probably next week. But we've got a bunch of receivers that we got to talk about from this uh, from this 2023 class as well. Some good ones, uh, some ones that, you know, Kayshawn Boutte, not in the class, right? That hurts. Nope. No Boutte, none of that stuff. So there's a lot going on um, with these 23 rookies, and it's always good to start to get an early look before you start, oh, this guy's the locked in 101, 102, 103, any of that stuff. I have no damn clue Right now, Jay, we're just trying to get through bowl season. Yeah, Lindsey Mack, the film sessions are are going up. Those are going to be dope over at the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash all gas. But there's a lot. This is going to be a good depth building class. Like my overall thoughts are 
if you've got rookie draft picks, any of them, I think they're going to be good, man. I think there's going to be good tight ends that you can get in the fourth round. Dalton yep. Kincaid, Luke Musgrave, Tucker Craft. There's going to be wide receivers that you'll be able to be able to pluck in the third or fourth round of rookie drafts. Jacob Cowing, Dontavian Wicks, Jalen Cropper, Rakeem Jarrett, uh, Xavier Hutchinson, A.T. Perry, some of these cats. You know what I mean? The running backs. Somebody asks, is this a better running back class in 2020? I, I'm, not gonna, is kinda... I'm not going to go there because we kind of have seen what those guys have become. And the 2020 class was Akers, Dobbins, JT, Clyde, Antonio Gibson, A.J. Dillon. That was the class in 2020. I think it stacks up from a prospect profile. I think you've got the elite back in B. John yep. Robinson. And then you got a bunch of other good backs that people are going to argue about who's two through five. So I do think that it's comparable on skill set and profile. Overall, it's just it's really good, man. It's a it's a yeah. really good class. I want to preview some more. We've got rookie mocks. We've got eighty people going to do all of that. But I really in this show today and the next couple of shows just have a conversation of what our initial thoughts are about these young cats and and what they could become in the NFL. You dig? Yes, sir. I, I'm dig? with it, man. It's Everybody be, keeps it's asking what's on the TV in the back. I don't fucking know. I Paid programming, baby. AG, uh, Ray G's got to make that money. I don't know what's going on in the back. I just turned the TV on. I don't know what it is. I mean, good grief. I mean, this dude's been asking about it all show. I mean, I, I, <laughs> he's very I, intrigued. I, I, right? He's very intrigued. I don't fucking know what it is. The engagement ring on the movie. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Is that Bet Midler right there. I don't know who that there is, but yeah, Jay. Anything you want to say to people before we get out of here? No, nah, man, I think, well, one thing I do want to say to people is follow us on Instagram because I'm trying to do more stuff on Instagram. Oh, and, Cowing's uh, going back to school. That blows. Okay. No, he's not. He's going back to school. Oh, Jay Vot just told us Jacob Cowan going back to school. So there goes that. Another receiver out of, yeah, out man, of the pool. Like the receiver class like is taking a dump. You said what now? Follow us where? <laughs> on Instagram, man, I want to start doing more film session, like smaller film stuff. You did, you've done some of that before. Um, and I want to start putting that stuff up in YouTube shorts on Instagram. So I would follow us over there because we're doing some cool stuff over there as well. And then um, I think just go to Michelle Adoro, man, get some coffee. I okay. had the uh, Espresso Intenso this morning. Oh, it was good. That's the Cremoso, the Espresso Cremoso that we, yep. you have in the picture that I made. But uh, yeah, go get some coffee. And I when think are we gonna uh, do, subscribe uh, to the pod. What's when are we going to do a rookie mock? Are we going to do that next week? You want to do a rookie mock next week? I so here's what we're we'll out do, right? next we'll, week. You're we'll, out next week. I will be gone Wednesday next week. So if you want to do a rookie mock next week on Wednesday, or you no. want, I was gonna say, let the people let you know Wednesday because I'll be gone on Wednesday. I'll be out for Christmas. But um, let the people know in the comments, man, what they want because you could do receivers, which I think would be a really interesting conversation, or you do a rookie mock while I'm gone, um, and right. then we could do the other one on Friday, depending okay. on what the people want. Because Friday is, okay. you know, unless we want to talk championship week. Championship week waivers. Yeah, man. I'm the, Anthony, I don't Richardson, think want that. Anthony Richardson, QB1, 2023. Let's get it. Appreciate y'all tapping in. Lock it in. in. We appreciate y'all tapping into the show. Y'all make today great. Have a fantastic freaking Wednesday. We'll be back on Friday. I have no clue what we're going to go do. Everybody's saying mock, 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 mock. Y'all want some mocks. We'll do some mocks. Make sure you tap in the Destination Debbie podcast feed. Subscribe to the newsletter for free, 99. You can do that in the comments below. Leo said, lock, you sold me. Just keep an open mind, Leo. That's all I'm saying. Keep an open mind, baby. I appreciate y'all being here. I'll finish the engagement ring uh, for the milk crate. Y'all be safe out there, and we'll see y'all on uh, Friday. Y'all have a good one. I'm out. Peace. Thank y'all for watching The Wake Up Show with myself and Jay Rich. If you finished the show and you're still hanging around and have yet to hit the thumbs up button or subscribe to the channel, do that right now and turn them alerts on while you're at it. If you want more exclusive access to me, Jay Rich of the entire Destination Debbie team, patreon.com forward slash all gas gives you that access. Make sure you subscribe to the newsletter for free 99 content. And if you want to get in on that action, use the promo code wake up over on prize picks for a 100% deposit match up to $100 for first time users and a brand new show dropping on the Mojo YouTube channel. Myself and Jay Rich will be talking about these players and their value from a stock market perspective every single week this fall over on Mojo. It's all gas all the time. Love y'all. I'm out of this thing. Peace.